Hello everybody, my name's Llama Joe and welcome to my channel. Alright, we are back into the letter uh, with Marianne again. So, here we go. Let's just get right into it. Riding to the Ermengarde Mansion in their rice is an awkward affair. Not only am I worried about scuffing the expensive leather seats, but I'm also worried about getting in the middle of another couple's spat. With the tension thick in the air, I can feel them staring at each other any time. Nobody is saying anything. Up until Mr. Wright tells his valet to turn the damn radio off. And for a moment, I think he might start. But instead, he just stays quiet, and so do the rest of us. In the end, the sufferable silence stays. I have never been so glad to see a house. Stepping out of the car and up to the mansion meant the end of an uncomfortable ride, and I can finally take a deep breath of fresh air. The beauty of the place never fails to make me gaze and wonder every time I see it as well. Mrs. Wright moves towards the front door, keys in hand, and I can already hear Mr. Wright plodding. All right, Johans, we're going to go in, but I want you to look around the place. Familiarize yourself with it. Know every nook and cranny, every inch of the lot. Go and see where we can put that vineyard and the other things we talked about. I we'll want to know where to station security as well, so go around the perimeter and figure it out. Scouts a property and circles a perimeter on foot. You do know this is 46 acres of land, sir. <laughs> well, you are not driving a car over the grass. Put those long, spidery legs of yours to good use. I didn't hire you to stand around and look intimidating. Go, mush. Someday, I'd like to ask how Johans can even stand and tolerate the man. Why doesn't he just quit? Certainly the pay can't be that good. Even I'm a bit put off by our mutual employer, and the only thing that keeps me from bailing is the fact that we've already signed a contract. At least I'll only be working with them during the duration of the project. He works with them every day. Sometimes I think you hired me to make me suffer for your amusement. Someday I'd ask. I feel a bit bad for him. If it's any consolation, he'll be away from Mr. Wright if it's only for a little while. Uh, a lot longer than a little while if he's walking 46 acres of land on foot. We're able to enter the mansion after a bit of standing out there in the sun. This wretched, strange sunlight that is far too alien and rare. There had been a bit of a problem with the missus not knowing which key was which. The first item on the agenda would be the grand staircase. It seems sturdy during the open house, but a closer inspection might say otherwise. There are no obvious marks of damage, nor wear and tear, probably re-threaded during renovations. Peeking under the grand carpet, the wood is properly installed with the bark placed down to prevent cupping. The carpet itself could use a vacuum, though. Structural conditions, from what I can see without actually dismantling the thing, look to be in good shape, and the handrails and support posts are firm. The work on it should be commended. I, I can't look much more into the rest of the foyer, however, because Mr. Wright starts to hurry us into checking the dining hall. So, what do you think? Certainly we can't turn this area into a garage. It's Jacobian architecture. I'd say these would be pilasters and not buttresses, but you never really know. Ha, huh, she said but. They really liked mixing up these elements. You could bad. say it was pretty avant-garde at the time. We might hit a support beam if we're not careful. And in layman's terms? From what I see here, we could risk great damage to the house if we try to turn the dining hall into a garage. The man didn't look too pleased at this. There's a look of disappointment before he sighs and looks around the place with an air of defeat. When he moves to speak, I dread another unreasonable demand. Again. This will stay a dining hall then. But if I may have another request instead, at least spruce the place up with some flowers, some plants, or something. I feel so old and dead in here. You have no idea, boy. That's hardly unreasonable. Daffodils are a must, I presume. The look that passes between the two of them. There's a genuine look of fondness there. This is the first time I've seen such an exchange between the two of them. If anyone are to see them like this, there is little doubt that they loved each other. Of course, and I want a garden full of them. Now if you excuse me, I'd like to look at the rest of the house. I'll just be around here downstairs, if anybody needs me. That leaves Mrs. Wright and I. He's quite fond of them, you know. I can imagine. He looked terribly upset when we told him he can't have his garage. <laughs> I meant the daffodils. We always have a vase full of them in every house we own. Somewhere. I'd like to think. They may be about his mother. Hmm. He never talks about her. I don't even know her name. 
He likes to flatter, claim that they remind him of me, but he's always loved the flowers, even before we married. Much like the piano, I didn't take him for a person who liked flowers. Daffodils, least of all. What's next? Am I going to find out that Mr. Wright saves kittens from burning buildings? I'll go and snoop about upstairs. You go and do whatever it is that you have to do. When she goes, without even asking if I need her here, I'm left standing to stare at the walls. Really, I don't need to do a thorough inspection of the building itself. It isn't really part of an interior designer's job. But the architect in me is committed to doing this task with every project. If I'm going to make a living space that have both form and function, I might as well make sure that the entirety of it is safe for my clients. Since I'm already here, I roam around the dining hall to check things off my punch list, if you will. But when it's time to move on, I hesitate. Mr. Wright said he would be somewhere around here on the ground floor, and I really didn't want to be alone with whiskey. I have to look through the place eventually, sure, but on the other hand, I can do it later when he's gone. I can go upstairs first if I want to. Which floor should I go for? Uh, check the ground floor. Check the first floor. Uh, said ground floor was where Luke was. Uh, sure, Cooper's one. I've already seen enough of this floor during the open house. Of course, I know that this is just a convenient excuse. I just don't want to be in the same room as Whiskey anytime soon. Okay, cool. So I might as well just go upstairs first. The banisters on the grand staircase's landing are solid and at a proper height. Any lower and they would be trouble. There's a small catch on the carpet, though, but as long as nobody tries to run down the stairs until it gets fixed, things should be alright. And the stained glass? Art. Restored, no doubt, in the image of the Last Lady and the Lord of Ermengarde. Or was it supposed to be until Lady Charlotte's fiancé was brutally murdered? Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. By a witch. A witch, of all things, from what I've read. You'd think the historians of this place would be a lot more scrutinizing, filtering out stuff like that. I'm amazed they bothered with it instead of replacing it with some generic cookie-cutter design. This entire piece alone would have cost roughly 500, even a million pounds. Lady Charlotte Ermengarde and her beloved. Looking at the mosaic, it's not too far a stretch of the imagination to believe that the depicted images could be Mr. and Mrs. Wright. It can be easily assumed as such if one doesn't know the history of the mansion. Really, a place like this should be protected by the government as a landmark. But what can I do about it? Oh no, the attic door is open again. Oh. Walking into the East Wing, I try to go into the theater, but is met with an obstacle. The obstacle that is locked doors. Two doors. Two. And both of them are locked. I'd be frustrated. Would be if I already hadn't snuck off while the Wrights were having their little business meeting with Miss Cooper before to take a peek. With what Mr. Wright wanted, we'd have to install a power projector, the type they use in cinemas, and a projection screen. The seats would have to be re-upholstered re if they're to be any comfortable, and the walls will have to be covered in dark material, paint, wallpaper, or install wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Really, of all the rooms I could be jealous of, it's this one. I could just picture myself in there, watching old kung fu flicks on a weekend-long marathon. Makes me wonder what kind of movies Mrs. Wright would like. Rom-coms, perhaps? Her husband, on the other hand... I'd rather not think about it. In the middle of my notation and planning, I don't even realize that I'm not alone until I'm caught standing in front of a locked door like a fool. Were you meaning to go in there? I'm afraid we won't be able to open it up today. Oh well, I wanted to, but it's fine. I can still survey the rest of the place. Apologies, but the key was missing when they were handed over. They told us that they'd get right back to us with it. What? But aren't they supposed to hand over all the keys once property changes hands? That can be grounds to file a complaint. They were already kind enough to let us move in so early. There's no need to raise a fuss about it. Worst comes to worst, we can call for a locksmith. Oh, that face. Ooh. The air is heavy and somber when she goes quiet and glances out the window. Out towards the vast expanse that surrounded what would be their house. Their home. Then she looks back at me with a sigh and a bitter smile. Flowers, yellow flowers, daffodils, dandelions, and sunflowers in the sort all up front. Just a whole garden of them. They'll make the house look lovely, won't they? Of course. A garden is a wonderful addition to any home. As I say this, her eyes roam over me, scrutinizing and thoughtful. I have to hold back the shiver that threatens to run down my spine at being inspected so closely. Yes, it must be nice. 
We're still talking about the gardens, yes? Hmm. I mean, not having to worry about what another person thinks of you. What do you mean by that? She lifts her hand and points to her wedding ring before it falls listlessly to her side. Sometimes I wonder what would have happened if I didn't marry Luke. There'll be no fights about walking closets or silly helipads. I could do with this place as my heart desires until there's nothing but content. Then again, I wouldn't have bought this place if it wasn't a gift for him. I probably wouldn't even be in Luxborn if it wasn't for him. Maybe I would have moved to London, Manchester, or Birmingham. I might have even left the country altogether. France, Germany, Spain, Canada, Sweden, even America. America? The possibilities would have been endless. I don't know what to say to that. What is there to say? I'm sorry. I must sound so petty and ungrateful. I do love him. So very much, even if he can be a bit difficult at times. Oh no, not at all. I'm just confused why you're telling me this, of all people. Just a whim, I think. Just flights of fancy, that's all. <laughs> Don't you ever think about one decision you've made in your life and wonder how much would change if you chose to do things differently? I try not to dwell on the past, ma'am. The key word is try, of course. Thinking of the past brings up too many ghosts. Literally, in this case. Memories of her. And I do wonder what would change if I just said yes when she asked for me. Maybe she'd still be with me. I return to the present, just like I said. I try not to dwell on the past. Uh... You must have been quite the pair, Mrs. Wright. Oh, man. Maxed out with Hannah. Hannah Evans and Luke Roy taking Luxborn by storm. At least, that's what I've heard. <laughs> that gets a giggle out of her. And can I be blamed if I like the way her eyes crinkled or how she sounded when she laughed? It, I'm conf I'm really confused. Like, is she bi? Is that, like, a thing with her? I mean, that's fine. But, like, she keeps talking about this woman and, like, almost like she had, like, some kind of romantic interest in her. And she's kind of describing her like she finds her, like, attractive and, and more than just like, oh, no, she's a pretty woman. Like, more like a... Mm. Like... I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I just... I don't know. Like, it, I'm, I'm just confused. Because when they talked about her being a lesbian earlier, she got, like, all offended and clammed up. And maybe that was because of the, her past? I don't know. Quite the celebrity couple, according to all the newspapers. But it wasn't always that way. Father certainly didn't approve of him at first. Why, he told me to stay away from him. Told me that I was too good for him. That's the usual overprotective dad speak, though. But of course, you know that. Of course. I don't. I was too busy keeping my grades up at a boarding school to maintain my, my scholarship. Never mind the fact that I went to an all-girls boarding school, so Father never had any reason to fuss over boys trying to date his little girl. And what did you tell him? Considering you are Mrs. Wright now, you or the mister must have convinced him otherwise. Yes, well, I told him I was my own woman and I could decide who was deserving of me or not on my own. Thank you very much. That never stopped him from making sure Luke couldn't get anywhere near me without an escort and a guard anyway. Though he certainly wasn't that overprotective when I was dating Jack. Maybe your father considered this Jack a more capable man? I doubt it. Why does the name Jack sound familiar in this game? Has that name come up before? Jacqueline was nowhere close to being any sort of a role model when we were in college. She was rebellious, oh, okay. reckless, and immature. Everything I wasn't. But she was quite the charming, stunning woman, and I think that made her quite likable. That takes me by surprise a lot more than by the fact that Mr. Wright's father-in-law didn't like him. That much was to be expected. But this? I have nothing against them because that's their thing, though the nuns and the priests would say otherwise. Although, wasn't she worried about the implications? The rumors that would have arisen about her dating another of the same sex? Wait. So, Alright, I'm confused. But alright. Especially with someone of her social status. I, did, I didn't take that as that she was dating this girl. I just... Okay. All right, whatever. I guess Hannah was by as well. Okay, cool. You look surprised, Marianne. The first thing anybody needs to know about me is that I go after what I want. And, when it comes to who I love... It doesn't matter to me whether they're a man or a woman. Oh, well, there you go. It's a nice enough sentiment. 
Still, the thought that this lovely lady before me had once been with another woman. I can feel my cheeks heat up a bit and I panic, thinking they might be red enough for Mrs. Wright to notice. I can't tell, though a coy smile graces her lips. Legs, we called her, because of how often she was running about because of one thing or another. Climbing up walls and, what do they call it now? Parkour. And also because of her, well, legs. Yeah, I kind of figured that with a name like Legs. And you went after her? Not right away. When I first met her, I wanted nothing to do with her. She was so improper and uncouth. But I slowly realized that didn't mean she was a bad person. On the contrary, she did many a good thing and was always so nice to others. I found myself confused. I couldn't figure out if I wanted to be her or wanted to be with her. So I approached her, told her that I might have fancied her. And your father didn't mind? He must have thought it was my form of rebellion. But he never watched out for Jack as much as he watched out for Luke. If I didn't love my father so much, mm. if he hadn't raised me right, I think I might have told him to bugger off. He's never been more attentive of me than when I started bringing home dates. Yeah, that's kind of how it goes for fathers. <laughs> I'm sure he loved you very much. <laughs> she laughs once more, a glow about her. I know, she says with a small smile. I suppose I've taken too much of your time with my silly stories. You still have much to inspect. I still have most of this floor, and I'll want a quick run through of the ground floor again later. I shan't keep you from your work any longer then. Just call me if you need anything. I'd like to look around myself. When she turns to leave, she glances back at me before disappearing into the foyer. Why did the music change? I don't like that. I look out the window from where she was standing. And I move on. Alone with nothing but my thoughts and her. Finally, some peace and quiet. Thought the old biddy would never leave. It's utter madness, this hearing things. I reckon it's the stress, though I don't know what exactly I'm stressed about. If Mini Mrs. Wright has really thrown me for a loop, I'd be worried. If I'm developing some sort of psychosis or disorder, well, I'd call a doctor. But hopefully it isn't that. Not right here, and not right now. I mean, it could just be that personal talking cricket, the conscious, so to speak, and I'm only nosy now, though if it is, it isn't very helpful. Pushing the dilemma of voices in my head aside, I go back to work, but I can barely make it a few steps before everything tilts and shifts. I don't really stumble, but it feels like I'm being thrown off my feet and the rest of the world just follows. Though my feet stay firmly on the ground, and even if I stay mostly upright, I feel like I've been heaved up and put off balance. I have to close my eyes in the hopes of willing the sudden sense of vertigo away, but when I open them, uh-oh. Uh, well, I don't feel any less sick because of the sight that greets me. Blood drips from the walls and the ceiling, pooling downwards and seeping into the curtains and the carpet. Nope. A wave of nausea, stronger than the last, hits me along with overpowering stench of blood and gore. I want to bolt. The rational part of my head is telling me to flee. And I would have gladly done as it is asked, if only I didn't hear her. In here, Marianne. Come on. I have something to show you. Don't do it. I could have ignored it, would have ignored it, if I only heard it in my head. But I swear that this time, it's coming from one of the rooms. Much further in... into the study. And I feel compelled to pay attention. I, I can't just turn around and leave. Not when it's her. I don't even think as I follow the sound of her voice. Oh no. Lorianne. Or Lorraine. Not Lorianne. I'm stupid. Sorry. Lorraine. Lovely Amanda Lorraine Lazerfiona. She was my friend. The only one that I had at St. Samathens. Samthens. I was a scholar. The charity case in a school for privileged and prestigious young girls. They all looked down on me. They cared to look at me or acknowledge my presence at all. All except her. Ugh, oh, stop your crying. You know better than to listen to Maeve. That's how you pronounce that? M-E-A-D-H-B-H -H is Myth. Why I ought to teach that butterface a lesson? Wait, no, lass. I don't want you getting into trouble with the sisters again. Relax. It's not like I'm going to stomp her and her lackey's arse is flat like last time. Come on, let's just go back to our dorm room. I don't want to be on my tobler while you go get yourself punished. You'll be fine. Gibbs there with you. Lorraine was there when I needed her through my highs and lows. 
Having her as a friend made, me being, made being in a strange school away from my father all the more tolerable. She saw this poor, helpless girl who was kept down and shunned by everyone else, and being the kind soul that she was, she rescued me. So brave. So beautiful. She was something else. I'll eat all the chocolate stashed away in your closet if you go. I can get Mar. Just don't go complaining to me if you get a tummy ache because of that. Well, you don't want to get detention on a weekend, do you? It's a Friday. We can go to town and have some karaoke. And we can have a go at druids and demons again. <laughs> You're not going to miss that just because of Maeve, are you? Maeve. I'm sorry. That does not spell Maeve. It just doesn't. M-A-I-V-E. That's how I would, with an accent on like the E or over the I or something, would be Maeve. Not Meedhub. That's, no. Sometimes I question what I did to deserve a friend like her. In the darkest corners of my mind, where traitor's thoughts lurked, I thought that she only felt sorry for me. Maybe she was just being a good Samaritan, offering a helping hand. And perhaps I had been too selfish to return the favor. You have a point. I'll just kick her arse on Monday then. That's not what I mean! I know what you mean, Em. Wait, where are you going? You just told me you wouldn't cause trouble. I still have something to do. Don't worry, it's not like I'm going to burn down her dorm room or something criminal like that. I'm just going to talk to her. Maybe I'll make it so that her room smells like a dog's air biscuit. That'll make it an excellent weekend. I'll see you in a bit, Marianne. Lots of tobblers. Because when she told me that she loved me, I couldn't admit that I felt the same way. Not to her and not even to myself. It was wrong I was taught that way. Husband and wife, one man and woman. So, okay, yeah, okay. Unclean, impure. I prayed for her and I for our sins and for salvation. I wanted to apologize for disregarding her feelings so callously, and I must have been like a slap to the face for her. But life had gotten in the way. Exams, which were trivial in hindsight now, took top priority. I had to keep my grades up to keep my scholarship for my father. I told myself I would apologize to her when those were over, that I needed to focus first and not let anything distract me. It had been easy when she avoided me like the plague. She was upset. I get that. I thought I had the time to make things right, but... At seven in the morning, students found a fifth year dead. Oh, she killed herself. Assumed to have fallen from her dormitory window. That's sad. <sighs> they told us that it was an accident. That was the official statement. But I knew better. She was dead because of me. May have had a hook and I kicked the bucket, didn't she? Ding dong, the witch is dead! She had, though she didn't say witch, Lorraine. But at least Maeve had the courage to admit how she felt about me. I don't even know how long I've been stuck here in a trance. In the mirror, Lorraine smiles at me. She's as beautiful as I remember her. But then... <laughs> I feel bile rise up in my throat as her clean image warps and how she looked like when they, they found her dead, lying on the cold, hard ground. Good Saint Dymphna, great wonder worker in every affliction of my mind and body, help me. I'm seeing things, hearing things. Am I going completely insane? Looking everywhere but at her, I hope and pray that it's enough to will whatever this is to go away. It doesn't even immediately rush into my head that I can't just leave. You, on the other hand, can't even look me in the eye. This isn't real. You're not... You're dead! I'm dead. Because of you. And you won't even look at me. Look at me. My breathing quickens and I can feel my heart being torn apart by her words. I'm so sorry, Lorraine. I... Look at me! I can't take it because she's right. It was my fault. The least I can do is look at what I've done. Lorraine, broken and bleeding, looks at me with such hate-filled eyes. An unnatural smile stretches across her face and I can only see malice in it. 
No, 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 no. Then she lunges at the mirror, ripples around her form, the glass parting like the water's surface for her. She grips my shoulders and I can feel her nails dig deep, sharp, even through the fabric of my clothes. There you are. No! Oh god. Woo boy. I didn't expect that. Apologies spilled through my lips and as tears cloud my vision. N the relationship with who knew with who? But I won't give into this madness. With every bit of strength I have left, I struggle to get away from her. Fear grips and threatens to choke me. I endure. I escape. And without turning back, I stumble back out. In my panic, I don't even care to look where I'm going. With one hand on the wall to steady me, I just hobble as fast as I can away from the study. Away from that mirror. Freedom is bittersweet. Sorry. I'm free from the madness, it seems, as running out into the hallway reveals it to be in pristine condition. But it means I've turned my back on Lorraine. Again. I have no plans of stopping, not until I know I'm safe. And if that means walking back to Luxburn, as ridiculous as the idea is, then so be it. Someone suddenly grabs a hold of me, however. You know, I don't know how long I've been recording. Fingers digging deep into my shoulder and my heart nearly stops. My body seizes and I nearly scream. M marianne you look awful. I, I mean, not awful, but... I hope this ends soon. Did something happen? Are you alright? This is right. I, I... Okay, uh, I think this is gonna go for a little while. So, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, and I'll do the best I can to make it right. I'm Lama Joe, and I'll catch you guys later!